Ça a l'air de marcher mieux aussi. C'est ce qu'il y a dans l'adresse du panier. Nasson, test, test. Est-ce que tu veux le micro finalement ou... ouais. Le micro cravate, c'est ouais. comme tu veux. Sinon, on utilise celui-là. Oui, on va, on va faire comme ça. Alors, je ne t'entends pas sur YouTube. Mais je peux mettre sur Zoom. Ouais. Un décalage assez ouais. important. Comme ça, je vais les... Oui, c'est bon. Tu, le... tu projettes ou pas Qu'est-ce que je projette Tu projettes pas le jury ou... Je peux projeter le jury pour les questions si tu veux. Ça ne cache pas. Pour le jury, je pourrais... Oui, je le tuer. Je te donnerai tuer. Ouais. Est-ce que tu as envoyé les slides à tout le monde euh, Je les ai mis sur la page... D'accord. Ils sont sur la page de défense. Donc, YouTube a l'air de marcher. OK. On vous entend. OK. OK. Euh, OK. OK. C'est pas Et là, c'est bon OK, sorry for the lesson effect. Uh, so we are, we are on time and uh, we, are, um, we are here to, to hear David uh, talk for his uh, PhD defense. And um, you have to talk about uh, 45 minutes and after your presentation, the will a uh, long, long time uh, for uh, question sessions. And, uh, and after the, the question, uh, the, the jury, uh, we go to debate about your defense. So the jury is composed by uh, Antoine Minet, he is a PhD supervisor, and Aaron Yav from Technion, Israel Institute of Technology. Hi. And uh, Sorry for the pronunciation, but you, Evan Chang of uh, University of Colorado Boulder. Hi. And uh, I sit on the order. Uh, Sylvie Puto uh, from uh, Ecole Polytechnique, Palaiso, France. Jérôme Ferré from Ecole Normale Supérieure, uh, Paris. And Vincent Soumier, uh, head of the software. Uh, RD groups on Airbus operation. Hi. And uh, as invite Abderaouf Wajaout uh, on the MOPSA team, and uh, I'm Emile Chayou at Sorbonne University. So, David, you have 45 minutes to present your work. So, uh, thank you, and welcome to the defense of this thesis. On Static Analysis of Program Portability by Abstract Interpretation. This work was performed as part of a cooperation between Sorbonne University and Airbus. 
a word on software and bugs first. Um, uh, modern societies tend to devote increasingly important roles to software. Uh, for instance, uh, software controls the flight of aircraft, the brakes of cars, uh, emergency systems of nuclear power plants, medical devices such as uh, pacemakers, and inertial systems of rockets. Such system, such software are termed safety critical, as bugs may have severe consequences, including the loss of human lives. In addition, software evolves over time. Um, indeed, software tends to be used much longer uh, than expected at design time and in a wider variety of environments. Um, as a consequence, uh, bugs can not only originate from initial development, but also from a later version, in which case we call this a regression, or bugs can, may originate from the software being run in a new environment for which it was not suitably adapted, which we call a portability error. Uh, this thesis is focused on these two last cases of errors. We will use the glorified example of the Ariane 5 maiden flight. Uh, uh, Ariane 5 reused the software of uh, Ariane 4's inertial systems but he reused them in a new environment. The RN5 environment featured much larger accelerations. As a consequence, uh, the inertial systems failed, which resulted in the rocket self-destructing after 30 seconds of flight. The direct cost of this bug is half a billion dollars and indirect costs are probably larger. Software verification is thus mandatory in such a context. So we would like to use program verification techniques to verify software, but what techniques can we use? We would like techniques to be automatic for efficiency. We would like techniques to be sound so that all errors are detected. And ideally, we would also like techniques to be complete, meaning that all warnings point at true errors. Unfortunately, Wright theorem tells us that this is impossible. No such technique exists. We thus make compromises. All of us do some testing because testing is automatic and testing is complete as tests can show the presence of bugs. Unfortunately, testing is unsound as tests cannot show the absence of bugs. Therefore, some people do program proof, which is sound and complete and allows to express and verify arbitrarily precise properties of programs. Uh, unfortunately, uh, this technique, uh, program proof by deductive methods, I meant, this technique cannot be completely automated. As a consequence, it's rather hard to use on large and complex software. In this thesis, we focus on static analysis by abstract interpretation, which is sound and automatic. It automatically infers runtime properties of computer programs. Yet, it is incomplete, meaning that it can issue some false alarms. Now, uh, all these three techniques here are in use at Airbus, where safety is paramount, and software takes uh, an increasingly important role in avionics. Indeed, many aircraft functions in the last decades have been transferred from hardware to software. This is the first um, civil aircraft with zero software. And this is the A350 flight deck with a lot of software. As a consequence, avionics software are considered critical components of the embedded systems with a major impact on safety and their wide use. Um, they are thus liable to certification by third parties on behalf of authorities, such as the American FAA, uh, developers must follow the stringent rules imposed by the international the related international standard. Uh, these stringent rules are on development and verification processes, and they tend to be biased, biased towards uh, traditional process-based assurance based on informal verification techniques, such as intellectual reviews and tests. Well, this is an example. We, re uh, we receive system requirements from there. We derive high level requirements for software specification. From that, we derive a design composed of an architecture and low level requirements. We code, and then we verify. We verify against low level and high level requirements by tests, and we verify every single artifact um, uh, for accuracy and consistency in reviews. And it's not enough. We also re verify every single artifact that we have derived for compliance with upstream artifacts in reviews. Uh, so it is a lot of efforts in testing and intellectual reviews. Uh, such a process has been in use for decades at Airbus. Unfortunately, in the meantime, the size and complexity of so avionics software have grown exponentially, from a few million, million lines here to a few hundred million 
in lines here for the genetic software. And these legacy techniques here do not scale up within reasonable cost. In particular, the cost of verification ten, tends to blow up. And in recent projects, it has been liable for about 70% of the overall development costs. Uh, so to face this economical risk, Herbus have changed software processes. Uh, we have uh, come up with more automated processes where we formalize design artifacts more in order to automate verification. And the only way we have found to automate verification while preserving safety, which is obviously paramount in our context, is by leveraging formal verification techniques. Um, so we use static analysis by abstract interpretation to verify runtime properties of programs, such as absence of runtime errors. We replace most uh, unit tests with unit proofs, leveraging deductive methods. And we do most such uh, analy analyses at source code level because we leverage a formally verified compiler. And that process has been shown to be cost efficient. Now in this thesis, we focus on static analysis by abstract interpretation. So let us start with introducing the main principles of formal verification by abstract interpretation. It, came, it comes in three steps. First, you define the concrete semantics of your program, which is a mathematical model of the set of all its possible behaviors in all possible environments. In practice, it can be con constructed from the semantics of the individual command of the language. Then you um, derive a specification. A specification is a set of properties that you allow. And finally, you conduct a formal proof. Uh, which is a proof that the concrete semantics meets the specification. And for that to be efficient, you want to use computers to automate the proof. Uh, well, here is an illustration of uh, uh, abstract interpretation. Uh, we have here uh, a program with the state variable x that evolves over time. Let x, for instance, represent uh, the set of values of program variables. Um, well, uh, uh, this state variable has a number of possible trajectories uh, uh, over time, and the set of all possible trajectories is called the concrete semantics. Now, a specification can be that the semantics should not intersect a forbidden zone. That's a safety prompt. And the formal proof is uh, actually an inclusion test that the semantics uh, is included in the specification. Unfortunately, the concrete semantics is a non computable object due to right theorem. So, the approach of abstract interpretation to sidestep this computability issue is to automatically construct an abstraction of the semantics, an abstract semantics that represents a superset of the concrete semantics. Uh, now, a proof by abstract interpretation is an inclusion test between the abstract semantics and the specification. And this, in, uh, in case of success, entails correctness because the abstraction is constructed in a sound way. Uh, now, uh, if you use a static analyzer by abstract interpretation, you're likely to encounter alarms. They occur typically when the abstraction does not fit in the specification. Now, this can point as a real error, or this can be a false alarm due to incompleteness, due to the abstraction being too coarse to prove correctness. As a consequence, uh, static analysis tools use a wide variety of abstract domains in a trade-off between cost and precision. Uh, for, uh, for instance, uh, to abstract uh, the set of concrete values of program variables um, uh, abstract, abstract uh, static analyzers use so-called numerical abstract domains. Um, for instance, they use the interval domain, which only records the minimum and maximum values of program variables. It is very cheap, uh, but leads to very coarse analysis alone. On the other side of the spectrum, the polyhedra domain uh, computes uh, a sound of approximation of all linear relations of uh, program variables. Uh, it allows for precise analysis, but comes with a very high cost. And some subsets of polyhedra, such as octagons, are somewhere in the middle. They allow for rather precise analysis at a more reasonable cost. In this thesis, we plan to apply static analysis to two program equivalence problems, regression verification and portability verification. Regression verification aims at proving that a change in the code of the program does not add undesirable behavior. Portability verification aims at proving that a change in the environment of the program will not add undesirable behavior. For both problems, we will derive a static analysis that infers that two syntactic cl closed versions of a program compute equal outputs when run on equal inputs. In the case of regression verification, our patch analysis assumes 
that both programs run in the same environment. In the case of portability verification, our portability analysis assumes that each program runs in his own environment. So after this introduction, we will uh, present our patch analysis in the context of numerical programs. Then we will move on to the patch analysis for C programs and related structure layout portability. And we'll finish with Indian portability. So let us get started with patch analysis using a, a toy numerical language. Here we have uh, an uh, example program, P1, uh, which reads inputs into variables A and B and initializes counter C to one. Then it increments the counter A times in the loop with value B and then outputs uh, the value of the counter. Now we might want to change the code to go to a version P2 of the program where we basically initialize the counter to zero and output uh, the counter plus one. We may want to prove equivalence of these two program versions. And to do that, we assume that they read equal inputs, more precisely A1 equals A2 and B1 equals A2, uh, B1 equals B2, where A1 is the value of variable A in program one and A2 is the value of variable A in program two. And similarly for B. And we assume equal inputs and we want to prove equal outputs. More precisely, R1 equals R2, where R1 is the value of variable R in program one. Okay, now we can do that in a classical way by deriving the input output relation of each program uh, version. This can be done, for instance, using uh, invariance. We see that both programs have uh, similar nonlinear invariance, and in the end, they have the same input output relationship, assuming equality of inputs. We can thus prove uh, equivalence here. Uh, however, this method can hardly be automated as it uh, involves inferring arbitrarily complex uh, numerical invariants, such as nonlinear invariants here, which would require a very explicit domain that is actually beyond polyhedra, uh, which cannot scale. So we go for another, uh, another approach. Instead of analyzing uh, both program versions separately, we want to derive a joint analysis of program versions. Um, um, and to derive a joint analysis of program versions, we start with constructing a, a joint syntactic structure representing the both the two versions of the program. If we call a double program here, a double program has double statements with this panel symbol here representing syntactic difference. The meaning here is that both program versions read input into B, and uh, program one uh, initializes C to one, and program two initializes this. C to zero. Uh, we can find back um, um, the original version by version extraction operators, such as taking the left hand side of the parallel symbols gives you back to version one, and the right hand side gives you version two. Uh, note that we uh, construct the double program uh, uh, leveraging uh, classic edit distance algorithms and uh, implement that with dynamic programming. Now, then we analyze a double program using a dedicated double program semantics. And this double uh, program semantics uh, enables us to relate uh, the variables of program version of, of the two program versions. Uh, and here in this case, it uh, turns out that uh, it, infer, it infers equality. Well, it, it, it allows to prove equality using only linear invariance over uh, program variables. Uh, now, what is this double program semantics we use? Uh, well, we simply lift simple program semantics. Uh, simple programs P1 and P2 have simple states, which are standard stores from variable to values. Their semantics are standard input output relations over states. And double programs have double states, which are pairs of simple states. This is the state of program one, this is the state of program two. The semantics uh, is the semantics of statements are uh, relations, input-output relations on double states. For instance, the semantics of composing two syntactically different statements simply pairs the semantics of simple statements uh, in the output state. Uh, now, uh, the semantics of assignments is defined using this construct. Uh, the semantics of input, uh, sorry, the semantics of assignments is defined using this construct. The semantics of input statements basically assigns the same value 
to uh, input variable V. The semantics of output statements basically checks uh, that both versions agree on the value of the output variable V, otherwise an alarm is raised. Um, then when we move away from atomic statements to compound statements, um, the semantics uh, is defined by structural induction on the syntax of double programs. For instance, the semantics of sequential composition is a composition of semantic functions. The case of the if statement is uh, peculiar. It uses the um, double condition filter F here to distinguish between four cases. Um, in the, the two first cases are called stable cases and both program versions agree on the value of the test expression. Uh, the two last cases are, are termed uh, unstable cases, where the two program versions disagree on the value of the test condition. The two first cases, the stable cases, are standard. Uh, for the, the unstable cases here, we compose uh, the left version of the then branch filtered by the condition with the right version of the else branch filtered by the negation of the condition. And the, intuitively, this means that the left program runs the then branch while the right program runs the else branch. And this is the dual case. The semantics of uh, while, while loops uh, is defined using a list fixed point. Uh, the loop invariant here basically says that as long as uh, the loop condition holds for both program versions, they both jointly run the uh, loop body. As soon as it turns out to be uh, false for one program version, while the other program version continues running its uh, own version of the, the loop statement, uh, and both program version join again after the loop. Now let us move away from the double program semantics and come back a little bit to um, double program synthesis from a pair of simple programs, from a pair of program versions. Well, uh, here we have a, a simplified uh, version of an actual batch of the GNU core utilities, which uh, uh, changes uh, many statements and changes control structures. So it's uh, more advanced than the example we have seen uh, for now. Um, so what we first do is merge identical statements by leveraging standard uh, least common subsequence computations here. Uh, this can be done uh, efficiently using dynamic programming. Uh, then we align similar control structures. Here we only align the two uh, assignments here because here we have very different control structures. But we allow ourselves some simple uh, program transformations such as inserting this if true here. And this allows to align again similar control structure structures resulting in this double program here. Uh, which is sufficient for uh, uh, successful batch analysis uh, with only uh, linear invariance. So we prove equivalence here. Uh, now, uh, we have presented batch analysis in the context of, of a numerical language. Let us move on to our real target, which is C. And as uh, patches of C program may change data structures as ABIs of uh, targets might. Um, uh, they, they can change the layout uh, of structures in memory, the position of fields. So it's related to structure layout portability. Now, this is a simple C program. It has a data structure S with two fields A and B. It's a four byte data structure. Uh, it uh, has a pointer P, uh, it does uh, pointer cast and pointer arithmetics. Um, and at the end of the program, pointer P points to the last byte of field B. Now, what happens if we want to remove field A? We get a different version of the program. We get uh, a smaller structure as two here with only field B. And what happens if we run the two pro program versions in parallel? Well, they both read uh, bytes, uh, input bytes into the bytes of field B. Okay. Then they initialize the pointer. Then they do pointer arithmetic and oh, something goes wrong here. Well, that's because this uh, statement is not suitable pointer arithmetic for the new version. So we remove it from the new version. So it's actually incorrect. And now both program versions point to last byte of B at the end of the program, and they both out output the same value. So the two programs are equivalent. Now, let us come back to version one only, the C program alone. Uh, well, at the most concrete level, this program holds values for individual bytes. Um, but it's a C program, it has multibyte access to memory, and we want to derive numerical invariance. Uh, hence the need for scalar cells, which are synthetic scalar variables holding values for the memory references in the program. 
But as we can see, this program here uh, uh, abuses uh, the point of P to get byte level access to the encoding of field B. As a consequence, cells might overlap. Uh, so how can we analyze this kind of low level program soundly? There is the cell abstract domain by Mine uh, that was uh, uh, created for that. Um, memory is viewed as a, a dynamic collection of cells holding values for the memory references discovered during the analysis. Uh, more precisely, a cell is a tuple with a base variable, an offset, and a scalar type. And uh, a static analysis can be performed with this mon memory model using any numerical abstract domain simply using one dimension per cell. In this example, the cells synthesized are the blue cell here for the bytes of field B and the pink cell here for the pointer they reference. We also have a four byte cell for the pointer itself. In addition, the memory domain uh, identifies cell constraints, uh, such as this one that says that the pink cell is the high order byte of the blue cell, assuming little Indian. Now, uh, this numerical uh, invariant here can be represented imprecisely by the, the numerical abstraction. Now, let us leverage this memory model to do patch analysis. So we have a double program here with the two data structures and the different pointer arithmetics. Now, when we, we have the, the drawings of the two memories, uh, when we uh, um, when we analyze the program, we have equality between blue cells because this is the semantics of the input statement. And we would like to prove equality between the pink cells. All we have to, that, to do that are the numer numerical invariants, the cell constraints from the memory domain. Um, well, equality can indeed be proved using the program invariants and cell constraints that we have inferred. Yet, this uh, requires uh, inferring and maintaining such complex numerical invariance that will require an expressive domain that is actually beyond polyhedra, hence a very high cost. So we don't want to do that. But fortunately enough, we notice that we are essentially trying to infer equalities and equalities between cells representing the bytes of matching fields in the two memories, in the two versions of the program memory. Um, uh, and this is not a surprise, as we expect that uh, most uh, multibyte uh, fields will hold equal values during execution, uh, but for local deviations. As a consequence, we simply optimize the memory model for this common case. And we do it by sharing the representation of cells in the memory environment. We use a single representation for two cells coming from different program versions and holding equal value. We call that a B cell. A B cell can be either a single cell coming from program one or program two, or a pair of such cells holding equal values, which is called a shared B cell. Now, uh, when moving from cells to B cells, we first merge the representations of memory here, and then we read input. Because of the semantics of input, we immediately know that the same values are assigned to uh, fields B. Uh, so we can immediately synthesize a shared B cell as a proof of equality. Then, when the referencing point P, we would like to prove equivalence. Now, uh, in practice, the memory model uh, does not uh, immediately try to synthesize a shared B cell, uh, uh, synthesize um, two cells. It first tries to synthesize a shared B cell as a proof of equality. And it does it. Uh, by matching the memory abstraction against a number of possible memory patterns, such as the following. First, it looks in the very memory environment when, for an already existing shared B cell that would do the job, but there is none here. It may also query the numerical abstraction for equality. But as we said, uh, this requires an expressive domain that is beyond polyhedra. This is too costly, so we don't do it uh, in such a case. Um, so we look at Further patterns, such as the following. Can we find in, in the memory abstraction two cells, x1 and x2, that would be equal, and such that c1 prime would be at some offset inside x1, and similarly for c2 prime and x2? Well, there is an obvious solution because we have this shared B cell here that represents equality between c1 and c2, and c1 prime is as offset one of c1, and similarly for c2 prime. 
So we can uh, synthesize a shared B cell here only by pattern matching. We can additionally inform the numerical abstraction about this cell constraint, but it not, does not really matter uh, if this is an abstracted imprecisely. We already have equal, equality sim represented symbolically. Now we have implemented uh, our work on top of the MOPSAP platform, which allows for modular development of precise static analysis for multiple languages and multiple properties. Um, we have a prototype uh, static analyzer that is a few thousand lines of a camel, uh, half of which for the memory domain based on B cells, a third of which for double program construction and the rest for double program iterators and utilities. Uh, our prototype leverages much more lines of MOPSA itself. Uh, parsers and utilities, a large common framework and uh, iterators and numerical domains, either specific for C or generic for all languages. Um, let us present the architecture of the analysis. We start with the architecture of the analysis of C programs with cells, not patch analysis, simply C programs, runtime error analysis, let's say. Well, we have uh, a sequence of iterators for C statements of the C language or for uh, universal statements such as while loops. And uh, then we have an abstract domain composed of a memory domain here and a numerical domain. The memory domain leverages the cell abstraction and the numerical domain leverages standard numerical domains such as intervals and polyhedra. Now to construct an anal a patch analysis with cells, we simply uh, extend the set of uh, iterators with uh, iterators for double program statements. And we lift uh, the cell domain to the double memory using this patch functor here. And that's it. Now, to move on from cells to B cells, we simply replace the patch functor and the cell abstraction with the B cell domain. And that's it. Now, we have evaluated our work uh, uh, with respect to related works. For instance, the modif tool uses symbolic execution. The rev tool uh, leverages deductive methods, while DZM score rely on abstract interpretation. Uh, we uh, first uh, evaluate our work, compare our work on the benchmarks from the related works. These are synthetic benchmarks, and the three last ones are uh, simplified versions of real patches from the GNU core utilities. We analyzed uh, these benchmarks with our two memory models, the cell base and the B cell base, and we analyze with uh, three numerical abstractions, polyhedra, octagons, and intervals. We don't display intervals in the case of the uh, cell abstraction because uh, no analysis is completed. We can see that we analyze uh, successfully the benchmarks from the related work, uh, and usually faster, uh, quite often with one order of magnitude uh, faster than the related works on their own benchmarks, such as here as well. Um, and uh, when the, moving from the cell-based abstraction to the B-cell-based abstraction, we get more successful analyses using less expressive domains, such as octagons, and sometimes even intervals, which allow for efficient analyses. Uh, now, we have also evaluated our work on, on real code uh, from Core Utils and Linux, the core utils patches here change the algorithm uh, in the code of the program, while uh, the Linux patches here mainly change the data structures and adapt the code, uh, obviously. Uh, so we analyze them with our two memory models again, uh, with similar performance. Uh, we get very uh, successful analysis with polyhedra. Uh, and we can see that uh, for uh, many uh, uh, examples, uh, the B-cell abstraction allows to use the non-relational interval domain for successful analysis of uh, real patches with a lot with a great efficiency. Here we have a medium size uh, medium size program uh, analyzed in negligible, negligible time. Uh, note that the three first examples here are the real code behind the simplified versions uh, from the related work, and we can see that we analyze them with similar performance. We analyze the real code with similar performance uh, as the simplified code. Now, after this tour of uh, patch analysis, uh, we move on to a portability property, which is Indian portability property. A word on Indian S first. There is no consensus on the representation of a multibyte scalar value in computer memory. Uh, little Indian systems store the least significant byte at the lowest address, while big Indian systems do the opposite. Little Indians include Intel processors, 
and uh, big engines include internet protocols and legacy or embedded processes, which is part of our PC. Uh, uh, note that such a conflict might even, even trigger a religious war, such as the one Gulliver witnessed when traveling to the land of Lilliput. There, he met little Indians who insisted that X should be broken at the little end and fought big Indians who wanted to do the opposite. Now, Indianess is an important, is an important source of portability errors, especially in the case of low-level C programs. Indeed, the C standards leave the precise encoding of scalars partly unspecified. As a consequence, running the same code on two platforms of opposite Indianess can, be, uh, can lead to different behaviors. And porting a program originally written for one platform to a platform of, of opposite Indianess can be quite challenging. Let us illustrate this on this example. This small example is originally written for a big Indian platform. Uh, it reads uh, two, uh, two bytes from the network into variable X. Uh, then it copies X to Y, and then it reads Y using the big Indian convention, the value is one. Now what happens if we run the same code on a little Indian platform? Well, we get the same bytes, but when reading Y with the little Indian convention, we get a different value. Now, if we'd like the same value, we have to change the code and replace the assignment here with a byte swap. So we read the bytes into X, byte swap X into Y, and then read Y using the little Indian convention, and we get the same value as with the big Indian version of the program. Now, if we merge the two versions of the program using um, conditional inclusion directives, we get a so-called Indian portable program, which ensures that both programs read the same value for Y. Note that there are other ways to byte swap X into Y, such as bitwise arithmetics. So the program is called Indian portable if two Indian specific versions thereof compute equal outputs when run on equal inputs on their respective platforms. And we present a static analysis able to infer the Indian portability of large low level C programs. We have seen on the example that the semantics of reading and writing to memory uh, depends on the Indianness of the platform. So the, the program semantics must be parameterized with the ABI and here more precisely with the Indianness. So we must in particular extend the memory model to reflect the fact that reading a multibyte scalar value uh, uh, with the little Indian or big Indian convention yields different results. We do this by simply extending the definition of cells with their encoding. Cells now have an encoding which can be little or big Indian. And now programs are parameterized with the Indianess of the platforms. We have simple programs, P little and P big. Uh, their simple state on environment uh, over Indian aware cells and semantics of statements are parameterized. Now double statements are, have again double states this is a little Indian state, this is the big Indian state. And transfer functions for double statements are basically unchanged with respect to patch analysis. The only slight difference when composing two syntactically different statements uh, in a double program is that we are actually pairing the simple statements uh, such as interpreted with their respective semantics parameterized with, this, with the Indianness of their platform. And that's it. Now, uh, let us analyze the motivating example with cells. When we read uh, equal bytes into the bytes of X in the two program versions, we synthesize one byte uh, cells here in the little Indian memory and in the big Indian memory for vi variable X and variable X. Now, uh, and we record equalities in the numerical domain. Now, uh, in the little Indian program, byte swaps X into Y, which creates this cells. Then the big Indian program reads Y, uh, reads the X, sorry, reads the X from the values of overlapping one byte cells. So it has this expression. And then first program, uh, uh, then it copies X to Y. So we have this equality and we synthesize this cell. And then both programs read Y. We already have YB, so we synthesize YL. And then we query the numerical abstraction for equality. Equality can indeed be proved from the cell constraints and program invariants that we have inferred. Yet again, this 
involves uh, using an expressive abstraction such as numerical abstractions such as polyhedra. And this is not an option as we would like to scale to large program. So again, we notice that we are mainly inferring equalities between matching cells in the two uh, versions of memory. And uh, we again optimize the memory model for this common case, and we reuse the B cell trick. We share the representation of, set of equal cells in the memory environment. Uh, we have a single representation for two cells coming from different program versions and which have equal values. Uh, uh, note that shared B cells um, can represent equalities between uh, multibyte scholars or equalities modular byte swapping depending on the encoding of cells, which might be different from the host platform. Now, uh, recall the analysis with cells. We had the two memories here, little Indian and big Indian. We have a lot of pressure on the uh, numerical domain. Now, when moving away from cells to B cells, we first merge the representation of memories here. We reduce the burden of the numerical domain. Um, and when reading Y, uh, the memory domain does not immediately try to synthesize YL to query for equality, like with the cell domain, no. Uh, first, it tried to synthesize the shared B cell as a proof of equality. And it does it by matching the memory abstractions against a number of possible patterns, such as the following. Do we have a cell C somewhere that would be equal to both YL and YB? Well, XB is a candidate because we have this equality here. Um, so we do we have XB equal YL? Uh, well, we look at the values of overlapping one byte cells and because uh, YL and YB have um, opposite Indianness, we query exactly for these equalities here. So the test succeeds, the pattern matching succeeds, and we successfully synthesize a shared B cell for L here. This uh, the success of shared B cell synthesis relies on this abstract pattern matching and on three equalities here, which can be inferred using simple symbolic propagation or a full equality domain. Now, uh, recall that uh, Indian portable programs do not only do permit point adjusts, they also use bitwise arithmetics to write Indian portable code. Uh, for instance, in this example, both program versions read a byte into, a, into Y. The little Indian pro program stores uh, this byte at, uh, uh, at the low order of the two bytes uh, uh, integer x, and at the high order of, of x, it stores ff. And the big Indian program does basically the opposite. Now, we would like to prove that both program versions construct the same two byte words here. Uh, this can be done using an expressive domain such as polyhedra. Um, yeah. uh, but what we do uh, to scale is we use a symbolic domain, a symbolic predicate domain. Uh, we, we map uh, individual cells to symbolic expressions. And this symbolic domain allows us to infer that here, the, the, big, uh, the little Indian program, uh, uh, the, the low order, order byte of variable X in the little Indian program is the, uh, the, the B cell, the shared B cell for the byte Y. And the high order byte for X is 255. And it's the opposite in the uh, big Indian program. As a consequence, uh, equality can be easily inferred by a symbolic reasoning, and we can synthesize shared B cells with the bytes of X. Now we have uh, extended our prototype abstract interpreter uh, to support uh, this Indian portability analysis. Uh, so we have updated the B cell memory domain to deal with uh, several Indianess. Uh, we have added the bit size predicate domain. Um, so when moving from patch analysis to Indian portability analysis, uh, the architecture is nearly unchanged. We only add the bit size domain in a reduced product with uh, C machine integers, and we extend the BCL abstraction. That's it. Now we have uh, evaluated our work on uh, open source and industrial software. We analyze uh, open source software projects available on GitHub with multiple patches due to Indian portability bugs. We analyze small slices thereof using our specification primitives. We're able to report all reported Indian portability bugs. And we're also able to prove Indian portability without false alarms 
where applicable. We also analyzed two modules here of a large uh, prototype avionics application developed at Airbus. This application is designed to run on a big engine platform. Nonetheless, the two modules, A and S here, um, are designed to be portable to Little Indian, as they are also to be used as part of a simulator, which runs on the Little Indian platform. Uh, so these are quite large code, code bases. This is the one million lines. Uh, we analyze them quite precisely without false alarms. Uh, and um, uh, all findings here have been uh, incorporated into the development cycle because we have been working in uh, tight cooperation with the avionics development team and the simulation integration team. And as a consequence, the um, simulation integration team were faced with zero engine portability issues when integrating uh, module A into the simulator for the first time. Now let us conclude. We have contributed to the design of uh, static analysis methods for uh, uh, patch analysis and for portability analysis. Our main contributions are a double program semantics, a, a memory domain based on B cells, numerical domains, and an implementation with successful experimentation. Our double program semantics is able, is, it's a concrete collecting semantics able to represent, uh, to express the behaviors of two versions of the program at the same time. It allows for a joint uh, static analysis by induction of the syntax of a so-called double program. We provide an algorithm, a, hur a heuristic algorithm for constructing the double program from a pair of program version. In the manuscript, we, had, we additionally discussed the support for, for unbounded input streams, uh, which allow program versions to desynchronize when reading input. Um, our B cell based memory domain um, is able to infer and represent symbolically uh, important relation between the two versions of memory. It allows for uh, scalable patch analysis, in particular uh, patch analysis for, of, for patches of data structures, and it allows scalable portability analysis. Um, uh, we have also developed two numerical domains uh, with near linear cost. Uh, the bit slice domain is able to infer a relation between the individual bytes of uh, program variables in the two versions. While the delta domain discussed in the manuscript uh, is able to bound the difference between uh, the values in the two program versions. Uh, we have our prototype implementation on top of MOPSA is able to analyze successfully small slices of open source software and large real world avionics software. For future work, we plan to start with industrialization. Uh, we, uh, we are starting to industrialize our uh, Indian portability analysis uh, uh, as a means to um, support the uh, avionics certification objectives related to simulation fidelity. Uh, we also hope to uh, leverage our patch analysis to partly automate uh, impact analysis uh, within uh, uh, software product lines based on components, software components. We could also extend our approach of portability to further ABI related portability properties such as uh, portability across platforms where um, uh, uh, words have different uh, byte size or different data models. We could also support the pit, uh, against the pitfalls of porting from x86 or point PC to ARM. Uh, we could support the porting of applications across operating systems with different data structures. We could help 32-bit um, uh, uh, POSIX-based uh, systems prepare for the year 2038 problem where loop counters will overflow again. We could also uh, look at different portability properties such as uh, different ranges of inputs uh, as in the IN5 accident. Note that we focused on, on inferring equivalence while other authors characterize differences. Mm -hmm. We could extend our method to do the same Maybe we could infer a semantic distance between program versions. We might evaluate the cost of a patch in terms of uh, loop iterations or sizes of array, and maybe define and infer an improvement property between program versions. Uh, to finish, uh, I would like to mention a connection between our semantics and um, uh, hyper properties, such as information flow properties, secure information flow properties. Um, 
when composing twice the same version of a program as part of a double program, instead of comparing two program versions, we compare sets of executions of the same program. As a consequence, we can express uh, uh, two safety properties, two hyper safety properties, which are uh, 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 safety properties that can be disproved uh, using uh, a pair of terminating executions. Um, uh, the, such uh, two hyper properties include uh, secrecy and uh, termination insensitive non-interference. And indeed, we have been able to prove secrecy and non-interference on um, small, simple examples from the related work for now. Uh, so we could maybe uh, extend this approach and experiment on uh, larger, more complex software and maybe different properties, uh, which would might, which might raise the need for further abstract domains. So thank you for your attention and I'll be uh, happy to take your questions. Thank you, David, for your, your own time. And uh, now you have time for questions. And uh, we can start by the re reviewers. And uh, uh, the first must be uh, um, Eva Chong. Can you can you start the question? Yeah. Uh, yes. Eva, Eva. Uh, were you asking me? I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry to hear. Uh, yes. Yeah, sure. Okay. I'll uh, happy to 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 get started. Um, yeah, so I mean, I think the questions that I had, you kind of alluded to here in your uh, future work and stuff. So it's great that you're thinking uh, uh, about that, right? So in particular, I'm very curious to, to learn a bit more. I mean, I understand it's a bit out of the scope of your current contributions, right? But as you said, sometimes we also care about a small program change being, you know, generating some expected differences. So, you know, based on your experience here thus far, um, could you comment on your thoughts on whether your techniques could be extended or how would they be extended to be able to prove this sort of semantic differencing, expected differences, improvements? Uh, yes. Um, uh, so, um, um, yes, I, I think the, the, the main uh, point is uh, uh, partitioning. Uh, we, um, we benefit from uh, equivalences, um, 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 but um, when um, when looking at several cases, uh, we, we, yeah, when it, excuse me, when there is a, a patch that aims at uh, a change, for now our approach is to characterize the sets of inputs uh, for which uh, we uh, would like the two programs to be equivalent and to prove equivalence. Now, if we extend the range to the full range, uh, we can partition analysis to uh, look at the cases where we have equivalence and the cases where we do not have equivalence. Uh, now, um, by we could uh, um, use assertions. We could use assertions that um, um, uh, that uh, express uh, expected properties of um, of the, the two programs. And that would be um, uh, that would be proved uh, in the post state. Um, uh, for instance, um, um, we might have assertions uh, uh, where we want to prove that uh, uh, the, the second version improves the, the first version, and um, um, so we would like to um, uh, to. Um, um, to to prove that um, there is no execution so that uh, the uh, the first version uh, uh, passes the assertion and the second version fails the assertion um, and uh, I think this can be obtained uh, through partitioning um, indeed uh, the related work from uh, Partu and uh, really relied on uh, on uh, a lot of partitioning, they used a, um, a very expressive uh, numerical abstraction based on um, uh, uh, polyhedra, sets of polyhedra with partitioning. And uh, this allowed to um, partition the input state uh, to characterize differences between uh, program versions. And, you know, is that going to affect the complexity of the algorithms that? 
you're looking at in some significant ways or? Um, yeah. Um, I think it will not change um, double program synthesis. Um, uh, we will still leverage um, um, uh, symbolic methods for uh, um, proving um, uh, uh, equalities. Um, uh, yet, uh, obviously, when partitioning uh, analysis, uh, we will um, it will be harder to scale if uh, the patches are non-local and really change the uh, the structure. So yes, it might be more costly. Yeah. Well, thanks. Very interesting. Um, okay, so I guess um, should I ask a second question, or should we round robin through the committee? Uh, no. You have time. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Okay. Uh, all right, so um, so I really actually appreciated the whole structure of your talk. So thank you for the nice talk of sort of starting from um, um, uh, uh, the very core numerical programs to extending to C programs to looking at the application of NDM portability. So I could really see the sort of full design pipeline. Okay, uh, could hear the full design pipeline. And so, um, and it was nice that the Indian portability analysis was was really nice, and uh, but required really a careful sort of rethinking through that whole pipeline, right? Of a careful design of new domains, extending the concrete semantics in appropriate ways. Um, so then you have a whole list of you know other portability issues, thirty-two bit versus sixty-four bit, right? Is there some hope that we could capture all of these portability issues without necessarily just you know going through that whole design pipeline? Um, you know, designing complex new domains for all of these issues? Is there some sort of unifying theme that we can consider here? Um, I, so I don't have an, a, a precise answer to that question. I do not know. Uh, I think um, some of the approaches uh, developed here uh, could be extended to further portability issues. The, uh, I think the B-cell abstraction might be, might be useful to handle cases where um, um, uh, machine words have different sizes, um, but um, uh, yeah, um, I, I do not think we we have a, a general framework for addressing uh, uh, um, any portability issues um, um, with this. I guess the follow up is then, if not, then is there some you know, again, this is all speculation and that's totally fine. Um, in terms of uh, making this process, um, you know, I guess simpler and does not require necessarily a PhD thesis to be able to do. Um, um, yeah. Um, uh, well, the thing is, um, the, the approach we are trying to leverage is um, is really by um, is it's really quite modular and quite compositional. Um, I um, as we um, Yeah. So these um, these these drawings of uh, the architecture uh, they um, they convey the idea that um, designing an abstraction with the Mopsa platform is uh, is very compositional. So we can probably uh, uh, can probably leverage uh, uh, a lot of modules to to build a, a new portability analysis. Um, uh, likely. Uh, B cells might be useful uh, uh, for many program equivalence problems, such as portability, um, uh, at least for C. Um, and um, we can, uh, yes, we, we can extend the numerical abstraction by adding domains. Um, the, the thing is, we this drawing here is the image of a configuration file that is read by the MOPSA analyzer. 
So it basically constructs the analysis from uh, a pool of domains. So it, it is not a monolithic work that you have to redo uh, from scratch uh, uh, when doing a, a new analysis. You can really leverage every single module here and assemble them differently for a different analysis. So it is likely that when we investigate a number of interesting uh, analyses, such as portability analysis, but other analyses as well, obviously, um, we at some point reach a, a set of domains that we can compose to rather easily derive uh, new new analyses for different targets. So uh, I'm, I'm quite confident that uh, uh, much can be done by leveraging this modularity. Yeah, that's a good answer. Thank you. Uh, please, uh, can you wait for, for a while? Technical pause. And just the, the, the technical pause to switch uh, camera, please. Okay. To show the, the window. It's fine. Okay, it's fine now. Let's start again. Evan, it's okay. Okay. Um. Um. No. So thank you. Um. I. You know, I think I can wrap up and give go to other committee members. Okay. Uh, so, Aaron, it's your turn. Yeah, thank you. So, thank you for the nice work and the nice presentation. Uh, I have a few questions. Um, so, are there pairs of for I'm talking about patch analysis first. Are there pairs of programs that are in fact equivalent, but your double program construction will fail to show so? I mean, even if the analysis is precise enough, clearly, you know, the analysis is an over approximation, et cetera. So we can fail due to the analysis. But I'm asking whether we can fail to show equivalence due to the double program construction. Like it. Yes, indeed. Um, um... So th there is really a, a trade-off um, between the computational costs that we invest in the construction of a double program and the computational cost of the analysis. Um, uh, the double programs tries at deriving a joint structure uh, such that um, uh, the invariants are as simple as possible. Um, however, uh, in some cases, such as um, such as uh, um, typical uh, changes uh, um, introduced by co uh, compiler optimizations that unroll loops in sophisticated uh, ways and extract code from loops and really completely change the control structures uh, structure. Uh, there is little hope uh, that our, our double program uh, will be uh, um, uh, will allow for successful analysis. In, in practice, it will require uh, too expressive invariant for successful analysis. Um, so yes, uh, uh, compiler optimizations are an, an example of, of program changes where we completely fail to, um, such as vectorization uh, optimizations, we completely fail to uh, to discover a suitable double program for uh, a, a successful analysis with uh, uh, not too costly invariants. Um, so yes, uh, the, the double program is an important point. Um, um, it, it might be disregarded, but uh, de depending on how you construct it, you, the analysis will be easier or, or, or much harder. Uh, uh, in previous work with uh, uh, Parfouche, you, uh, you, uh, you derive an analysis that is able to, um, uh, to use semantic information to, 
to guide the interleaving of statements in the analysis. Um, uh, some, um, some other authors that work on compiler optimization do uh, similar work. And um, uh, we don't do that for now because we, are, we synthesize uh, the double program a priori um, uh, by, um, uh, by relying on syntactic uh, structures and on syntactic similarities. Uh, which is most of the most of the time successful uh, for small patches, uh, but uh, might completely fail actually. Uh, so we we add some program transformations to to accommodate new examples uh, uh, to uh, to make this uh, syntactic approach more more semantic. But but it is not uh, doesn't solve uh, any patch case. Thank you. That's uh, that's a good answer. Thank you for that. Um, so related to that, is there, so we talk a lot about the patch analysis and we have uh, formal semantics for everything, but there's a notion of closed programs that we talk about, which says that the, the two programs that we're talking about have to be closed in some way, and that is left very vague. So do you have a notion what does, what does it mean to, for two programs to be syntactically closed? Does it mean that they have to have the same looping structure or does what what does it mean actually yeah we uh, we we have no uh, formal definition of syntactically closed indeed um the uh, the idea is uh, so it's really an informal idea is that the the control structure has, structures are similar so if they have the same control structure then you can say they're nearly guaranteed to be syntactically close uh, as per our point of view, because we can benefit from the structural induction syntax of double programs. And when they have uh, dissimilar control structures, we, we try uh, in our double program synthesis approach, we, we strive at uh, building a double program that, that accommodates uh, to have uh, both program versions share in some ways the same control structures. Uh, for instance, by adding, uh, uh, useless uh, loops or useless uh, if statements, such as the if true we, we showed in the example, um, just to uh, to benefit from the induction of the syntax. So I guess we did not def uh, define the notion of uh, syntactic structure uh, formally, uh, but the informal answer might be that, that we can find an algorithm from the two, uh, from the two syntactic structures that basically merge the control structures. And there is a connection with um, uh, what uh, Bart uh, and others uh, do uh, when constructing um, uh, product programs. Uh, well, they, they do several versions of um, uh, program compositions. They, uh, they created self-composition and then they, uh, uh, they created varieties of, um, of uh, program compositions and they, they rely on on a set of uh, program transformations to uh, to do that, and uh, so it's maybe uh, similar controls, uh, syntactically closed programs means that we don't need too many program transformations to find back the the same control structure. Yeah, so I think my my understanding of the answer is that uh, syntactically closed programs are ones for which you can construct the double program using your algorithm. And if the algorithm says uh, I fail, then they're not syntactically close. Is that fair? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So I have another question. Again, sorry for like uh, zeroing in on this double program, but it's close to my heart. So I hope you appreciate uh, that. Um, can I have the same looping structure? Let's say, but one program is looping uh, from zero forward like incrementing the counter and the other one is uh, decrementing a counter so it's kind of the same looping structure but one loop goes up and the other loop goes down are these two I, I assume they're syntactically close because they have the same kind of loop but is that something that you can align and can create a double program for this would it work um well, um, well, you will create a double program. Um, 
And uh, one of the loop counters will go from zero to, to five and the other one from five to zero. Um, so um, I guess there will, we might have a linear relation between uh, the two uh, program counters. Uh, I want it. Um, um, I, I think you'll be fine actually in this example <laughs> uh, with with uh, with some of the domains. I'm not sure that with all of them, but yeah. Uh, yes, maybe not with non-relational domain, but using uh, polyhedra, I think we we make it. But we need polyhedra for to maintain the linear relation between uh, loop counters uh, in this case, I guess. Um, that, that, that's kind of my intuition as well. Um, so I have some other questions that are more specific. If you can go to slide 41. Um, you have, yeah, sorry guys in the audience. I'm, I'm, I'm going to keep asking questions until you stop me. Uh, <laughs> So, so whoever is uh, the chair of the session, I don't know who that is. Uh, you can stop me at any point because otherwise we can stay until tomorrow. Uh, so. So, so I can I can ask you if even if you cannot go to that slide, I can tell you what is the question. Maybe you remember. So there was a program called the uh, IOU ring, which was the only program that required uh, substantial time. So it took 15 minutes. I think I can find the slide actually on my... 15 minutes using, um, using cells? Uh... Using cell, yeah. And then when you moved to B cell uh, with octagon, it actually took more than one hour. So I'm, I'm curious uh, what what's going on there. I mean, all the other programs ran really quickly. So I think yes. that was the, uh, is there something know. special about this program or should just ignore the question? That's also fine. Not really. Actually, <laughs> uh, I'm going to say we have not really, um, um, I, I have not really understood the, uh, what, what happens, but it, it's quite uh, often the case uh, with the patch analysis, um, that um, uh, uh, octagons are uh, less efficient uh, than um, than polyhedra, uh, especially on small patches. Um, and uh, yes, in some cases, uh, well, the efficiency of octagons is uh, is poor. Um, and uh, yeah, this, this is one of these examples. But I have no uh, clear uh, explanation why this is the case. Okay. Um... So let me ask one, I guess maybe one last question. Um, so all the program that you ran on were rather small other than the industrial benchmark. Um, so is there something special that limits it to small programs? Like what is the bottleneck? Is it just that you did not have benchmarks that had two versions or is it the construction of the double program or the analysis that didn't scale? or not supporting certain operations like memory allocation, or what, what's the barrier? Why don't we have much bigger examples? Yes, so um, yes, some, some constructs such as dynamic memory allocation, we, we do not support, parallelism, parallelism we do not support. Um, um, uh, also, uh, uh, what do we have? Um, uh, yes. Um, um, uh, yes, in some cases, uh, 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 the transfer functions for tests, uh, uh, our tra current transfer fu function for tests are imprecise. Uh, they fail to discover that uh, actually tests are, sa are stable. And it's, it's quite sensitive to the, the structure of test expressions. And we have not yet uh, uh, come up with uh, uh, something that's um, able to leverage uh, arbitrary, well, not arbitrary code, but uh, a large success of the code. We don't have this problem with the with the industrial code because the the, the tests are usually quite simple. Uh, we don't not allowed to use a, a very complex test expressions in uh, 
have any software. Um, um, uh, yeah, and the, the Ionic software is um, um, the, the two modules uh, I talked about are uh, auto-generated from specifications, and um, well, they do contain uh, very low level C. I mean, at least module A. Module S is not the case. But module A contains very very low level C. However, uh, it is uh, co-generation, so it relies on uh, the repetition of a large number of time of similar patterns. So uh, you struggle to get the patterns to work, but uh, when you're done, you can have uh, 5,000 times the same thing, it, it works. Um, so it's, it's less the case with a uh, more diverse program, uh, which is that's what has handwritten open source code. Okay, thank you. I think I can let others uh, ask questions as well. Okay. So uh, we can pass to the examiners and uh, we can start by CD. Uh, okay. Thank you. And uh, thank you, David, for this uh, great uh, presentation. And uh, I'm uh, happy and honored to be part of this journey. Uh, I asked some questions that may not all surprise you. Uh, maybe my first question is, uh, so I understand your, your work is focusing on low-level uh, C, but uh, for sex, so, so how would uh, floating-point computation fit in a uh, sector framework? No. Um, so, um, we handle floating-point in our implementation. Um, our Adunix uh, modules here, uh, both the module A, which is acquisition module, um, and the module S, which is scale generated, uh, handle uh, sim simple and double precision uh, floating point numbers. Um, we assume that uh, uh, floating point numbers have the same indianess as integers. Uh, they do, it, it seems there exists a platform where they have different indianess, but we assume it's the same, and it's the same in practice for. Uh, x86 and power pc of interest um, and um, we um, we assume that uh, they uh, both uh, uh, both implementations have uh, this, um, the same follow the same ieee 754 uh, standard uh, with the same rounding and so they basically uh, do the same with respect to floating point computation uh, uh, so they both compute with, uh, for instance, simple precision floats, uh, same size, same rounding, same values. So as long as we prove equality uh, of inputs, we, we assume equality of outputs. Um, okay, but let's assume this, but how could you prove equality on floating um, with your With some abstraction? Okay. Um, Actually, they they read equal input. They read equal input from so we, we have uh, some input statement somewhere that reads uh, uh, from the outside world, and here we assume that it's actually the same values. So we start with equal floating point numbers, and and then we compute the same. Uh, so we, we compute the, the, the same statements more or less. Uh, we, we do not. Uh, yeah, in this case here, we do not have different statements for floating point. Oh, yes, if we, yeah, if we have, um, if we have, uh, if we have patches that change the subset of the code that handles floating point, we will uh, not be able to prove equivalence uh, uh, because um, round of errors. But uh, when we have the same input values and same statements, uh, we symbolically prove that they do the same. Uh, so because in the portability analysis, we, we, they, um, the, the main changes are, changes are the byte swaps, actually. So um, th there is there is no, not much challenge in the, so uh, improving um, equalities. So that's for Indian portability and for patch analysis. Yeah, the examples we have they they do not have um, patches of floating uh, of floating point uh, computations, and in this case, we would not be able to prove equivalence. Yes. 
it looks a very sensible sensible uh, answer but does it something uh, analyzing uh, patches where you can accept some small differences is that something that you uh, uh, yeah and um in this case we we we, we need to um we need to to do something that is similar to i guess to what the fluctuate tool does um, uh, Fluctuate has a pair of semantics. It has semantics on real numbers and semantics of floating point numbers, and um, uh, it handles uh, real values, float values, and and errors. Um, um, uh, we have a, a delta domain that uh, tries to bound differences between program variables in the two programs, and um, uh, I guess we, we might uh, try to leverage, uh, uh, well, to look more precisely at uh, IEEE 7.4 in this case, and uh, try to leverage uh, an expressive domain such as sonotops uh, in conjunction with this delta domain to, to try and, um, uh, and bound the, the errors on, introduced by changes in program variables. But it would probably, we would probably try to do something that's Somewhat similar to the the um, the affine expressions uh, handled by fluctuates. I guess. Thanks. Uh, this brings me maybe to my other question. The, I, I think you you mentioned it in the document. Uh, you 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 are mentioning uh, Zontox maybe as an abstraction that could be used, uh, and indeed uh, it's. They're quite good to express uh, differences, linear correlations, and and noise around something. So, so maybe it could be well suited to do something quite similar to your delta domain, and it's existing in some libraries. Did you not try to yeah, to not, use it? I've not tried. I think we should. Um, I have not tried. It. Yes, it should be tried. Um, um, for yes, for for instance. Um, in the case of um, two safety properties, um, uh, it happens sometimes in avionics that we have conversion functions. And in conversion functions, um, you sometimes have a default value, an error value, and, the, and you have a, an input value, an output value with some conversion that might be a linear expression. And um, sometimes there are bugs that make uh, the highest value go down to the lowest value. And uh, we would like to avoid these kind of things. And it might be interesting to, to express some form of continuity, uh, Lipschitz something. Uh, and so it's it's a property on the delta. And um, uh, maybe the zone of that would be uh, an, an interesting approach to uh, bound uh, these differences between outputs with respect to differences in inputs and detects when it's not guaranteed that a conversion function uh, is more or less continuous and, and something is weird. Thank you. Uh, I have another question, but maybe that's uh, something that I just not didn't understand perfectly. So in your patch analysis, you seem to rely on some input output streams to 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 to, to consider the, the program equivalence yes maybe would it be possible to to have this uh, kind of synchronization barrier and uh, that you that you are using and and verify equivalence between all variables because if you specify some specific variables that you want to observe, you may lose uh, lose some uh, miss some errors. Yes, uh, that, 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 that's right. Um, so um, the most general uh, framework is um, has an input stream, and uh, both programs read input in this stream, and this input stream is shared by the two versions of the program. So it ensures that they. They read the same uh, stream of inputs, possibly not at the same time. They, they, in the talk, we mostly focused on programs running in lockstep, uh, but, but they might desynchronize. So that's for inputs. And for outputs, um, 
uh, the, the property we want we would like to prove is that we have equal outputs. So we need not necessarily uh, verify equivalence for every variable, but we need to prove that the programs write equal outputs if they decide to output all variables that fair. But we just look at what's observable. And um, and um, yes, um, we yeah we, we might output every variable if, if, if this is required. But if the system actually uh, says that these are the outputs, well, these are the variables for which we want to prove equivalence. And it might be the case indeed that um, we don't care for some outputs. For instance, in the in the case of avionics or simulation, we we have uh, the case where there is additional code that is actually instrumentation code that the simulation guys might add. Uh, and it's interesting to infer that uh, for the outputs of importance, which are the avionics outputs, we do not change anything, but there may be additional variables or some um, or some built-in test equipment variables where we put different values because uh, yeah, it's simulation, we don't want the same, um, but, it, but it does not interfere with the rest. So it, it's worth being able to partition which outputs we, we want to characterize, on which we want to characterize it both. Okay. Yes. Thanks. Thanks. Um, yes. And um, uh, that's that was my final question. And, and the last comment, I, I must say that I am impressed that you tackled this uh, Indianness uh, problem, which has been a nightmare. <laughs> it's on fast for me. So <laughs> congratulations on on your work. That's concluding. Thank you. So much, Mara. Joe. Yes. So, so uh, first comment. So I would like to say that I am uh, very enthusiastic about uh, your work. On, uh, you master many aspects of your research. I mean, you give a nice uh, industry, uh, context with respect to industry. You explain every tiny details uh, very precisely. Uh, when you give high-level presentation of abstract interpretation, it's clear. You make everything simple, and it's very nice. And uh, it's worth noting that uh, the, um, the major difficulty is the long road to make it so simple. So, congratulations. <laughs> and it's not so, sim so simple. Uh, okay, so I have, a, I have a few questions, and most of them have uh, already been uh, addressed. So, I will uh, ask about uh, twisting them a little bit. Uh, so, first, uh, I see in your framework to me there is two orthogonal directions. There is uh, one that is to align the semantics, and the other is to infer uh, relationships once you have aligned the semantics. And in, in, in aligning the semantics, there is to align the executions because you have notion of program point, uh, you have to imagine, input stream, and you have already answered to, uh, to CV to that, and also to run about it. But um, in your slide, I saw several uh, ways of dealing with that. I have seen uh, edit distance algorithms. In some some slides, I saw something that I could uh, qualify as being code annotations. Like, you, you don't present it like this, but uh, you say that, oh, here I did something, so I have to replace with the loop. So to me, there, there is place for annotation of your code. Like, someone is patching a code, but it would be interesting to know how it is patched and to use that to uh, indeed uh, it, it solved most of the difficulties. Mm -hmm. And also maybe it's a good uh, uh, guidelines for uh, inferring. Uh, so I would like your opinion on that. Yes. Do you have some uh, guidelines to provide to the uh, uh, engineer to, uh, to, to do better patch, to document the patch, mm -hmm. to make your analysis simple, uh, easier? And my last question about this, and, uh, I should have asked, asked before is, uh, uh, do you have kind of power transformation you cannot deal with? That you know that it's a nightmare and you, yes. you have read them and you know you cannot. Uh, okay, so um, uh, the current implementation does not rely on code annotation, but indeed, uh, in some cases, it looks at the, at the two abstract syntax trees and it looks for patterns and uh, it does some program transformation to align properly and hop. It works. Um, uh, we could benefit from program transformation, saying that here we have uh, added, we have unrolled the loop once bef before or once after, 
um, uh, gives this kind of, of hints of program transformations. But there is indeed, there has been a PhD um, that was uh, following up again on uh, Bartouche and Yahaf, mm -hmm. um, um, that, that was uh, doing a cock development around um, something that is similar to double program synthesis. And uh, they um, they supported that uh, patches. They had a little little language for patches, where you could say at, at that line I added that, at that line I added that, uh, and this could be uh, used by the tools. And indeed, um, um, this would uh, this would allow to broaden the the spectrum of patches for which we would be able to infer uh, suitable uh, double programs that would actually lead to efficient analyses. Um, um, so um, the case of uh, vectorization was something where we uh, completely gave up. Um, um, I wonder, uh, uh, it may be the case that even some cases like that uh, with um, sufficient annotation that uh, uh, we unrolled uh, the outer loop and the, inter, the inner loop that and that number of times um, uh, to help the the, part, the syntactic base uh, pre-analysis uh, uh, find uh, well reconstruct the program transformation that would allow to align the, the statements uh, th that would probably uh, enable to deal with more constructs uh, uh, than um, uh, Program transformations for which we would uh, definitely fail. There are probably many, <laughs> but uh, uh, which one precisely? Um, um, I'm not sure. I don't know. Uh, I don't know uh, uh, what kind of uh, transformation would be completely out of scope. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, and you ask another question. Um, uh, which uh, was uh, uh, with respect to uh, streams. Um, yeah, but you have already uh, answered with the uh, same. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, my second question is uh, as also been uh, asked, but I missed also, it's about the complexity and also. It's a bit confusing because uh, you, you keep on saying that polyhedron do not scale, but on your benchmark, you will offer better complexity. So I want to, uh, I mean, I, I want to know two things. Uh, do you think there is a difference in the way the program is written that makes them more suitable than polyhedron that real life and the serial system? And uh, um, also, uh, the other question is, you know, for instance, have you tried affine inequalities, like in some examples, because you are looking sometimes for relationship between cultures, most, yeah. most of the time it's equality that you want, yes. and yes. not uh, inequalities, and yes. it's much more uh, uh, cheap. Yes, than, yes. Um, yes I, um, I have not done much uh, experiments with affine inequalities, but um, it's, um, it's actually an error. Uh, I do think uh, that many benchmarks would uh, successfully be analyzed with the fine qualities indeed, indeed with a uh, better scalability. Um, um, maybe some tests would fail because there are some some tests with comparisons that I'm not sure would be mm -hmm. maybe uh, precisely handled with fine qualities, but there are definitely benchmarks that would be analyzed efficiently indeed. Uh, then um, I'm not clear why. Uh, Octagons uh, sometimes um, occur to be less efficient than polyhedra in these examples. Um, but what we are trying to do is mostly uh, have successful analyses with non relational domains. Mm -hmm. and that was really the target. So we focused on the two uh, wide sides of the spectrum polyhedra against intervals. And mm -hmm. uh, we, we tried to make uh, analysis scale with the intervals. Mm -hmm. um, um, uh, then um, 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 lost, lost in translation. Uh, so, uh, but, but the difference between the content of the examples are there inherently ah, different? Uh, 
uh, between the open source examples and the uh, avionics examples, for instance. Yeah. Uh, yes. Um, uh, I think the uh, the avionics examples are, are simpler. Mm -hmm. but it's already something we discussed a bit with um, Iran, I believe. Yeah. Um, they they have um, they are, they are composed. They are, they are auto generated code, so they uh, they have a number of patterns. Uh, some of so many syntactic patterns, but many semantic patterns, but it's piling up patterns. And so you you struggle having every pattern be analyzed uh, properly and it composes pretty well. Mm -hmm. um, um, with the arbitrary handwritten code, uh, well, the invariants are more general and um, um, yes, uh, it, it, it's harder to make the analysis do to develop your to make your analysis progress in a compositional way by by, um, by but is it true that uh, you do not scale uh, with polygram and the uh, issue code or yes 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 yes, okay. yes uh, mm -hmm. just because you fail to split the sub the sub yeah. into the sub -problems. yes yes no it does not yeah. okay so then I have some question about security because uh at the end, you open a new uh, challenge, and it's very interesting. But since it's another challenge, I would like to better understand uh, the specificity and uh, what is the difference of scales in the example you would consider. And, uh, mm -hmm. um, well, for, for now, uh, um, so security was not the main focus of this work. It, it's actually a side effect of the analysis that we discovered uh, by chance, uh, um, and it is the case that other authors have uh, worked with that, such as uh, Zeidel and uh, mm -hmm. um, and uh, a PhD student, and they were doing something different, but uh, they encountered this relationship, um, and um, so we we have uh, only looked at uh, small examples, uh, examples for instance, for, for instance from Bart et al. who mm -hmm. Um, who uh, look at uh, secure information flow in addition to program transformations with their self-composition method, which is uh, which is about uh, uh, proving uh, information flow properties by composing a program with itself uh, in several manners. Um, so um, it turns out that we can do the same, and that our double program semantics. Uh, um, seems to be well suited to infer uh, uh, well security properties um, uh, I, don't, I don't know if I can show again uh, um, something uh, it, it's not my slides I'm not going to share it it's yours is it mine is it my screen I don't see my screen it's different from my screen you are viewing David Delmas. Maybe unshare and share again. Okay. Um, this is my, my Zoom, but showing your share. It seems I'm no longer uh, showing that. Now nothing is sharing. Can you share again? I cannot share because I am not good. Okay, I'm so much more. What's going to fish on the video? Why is it fish for us? Ah, mais parce que j'ai pris le. Ah, mais oui. Ça se fiche. C'est bon. Ah, c'est bon. Oui, c'est bon. C'est toi qui as le. Il faut que tu regardes. Non, mais je ne peux pas le Est-ce que tu peux le voir? Tu peux partager? Tu peux ouvrir les slides et les partager Oui, attends. Ah, ça, c'est moi. OK. okay bon. euh, je vais juste bien. changer de... Donc, on parlait de... Yeah. So, that, that, that's uh, an example. <laughs> that's a, a simple example. Uh, so, we... Well... Don't, don't, don't view that as two program versions, these are two different programs. So just look at, uh, at this one, for instance. 
So it reads uh, input into a public variable, and uh, it chooses uh, it chooses uh, uh, randomly a secret. And uh, if the secret is negative, it uh, does something on the public variable, but it resets the public variable all the, all the time. So this program is secure, and um, the analysis here is, is able to. The trivial of okay, okay. but the analysis here is able to infer that uh, those programs agree on the value of uh, of the public variable, so um, actually improves security. And this program here is a different program; it's insecure because uh, it well it increments uh, the program variable or the public variable, uh, the value of which can be changed depending on the branch on the on the secret. And the analysis tells that. Both programs do not agree on the public variable. That's uh, these are two programs, one of which is violating secrecy, and the analysis distinguishes these two programs. This is succeed, this phase. Um, uh, Bart also gives um, examples. Uh, uh, there is an example that joins uh, tables, well, it's a database example joining tables with salaries and uh, uh, data from employees and uh, some employees uh, have, are more secret than others, and uh, uh, we must show that this uh, crossing tables is non interference. And um, uh, the analysis uh, infers that uh, as well, uh, very simply, uh, by distinguishing. Uh, well, it basically relies on the fact that um, uh, we have two primitives we have the input primitive, which, uh, assuming one step and so forth. Uh, ensures that both program variables have the same value for every execution. And we have the random primitive, which, well, where um, program, uh, programs can have different values. And uh, um, as a consequence, uh, the analysis uh, is able to see if the, uh, the random uh, data flows to output or not. Uh, and and uh, yes, this. Uh, this allows uh, some security analysis. Uh, um, then we we have not uh, yet. Mm, yes, even some things like declassifications maybe uh, seems to be in reach. Uh, there was a Bath paper about, um, or uh, not that, a follow-up paper to Bath um, by an American team, uh, Stanford, I think. Uh, I lost the names, uh, but uh, they challenge uh, declassification uh, on top of what Bart was doing, and uh, it seems we can do that. Uh, it seems we can do that because uh, uh, it seems to fit in the kind of uh, uh, equivalence we infer. Uh, so I have a last question, <laughs> and it's uh, more specific to your particular background. Learners, the standard PhD students. So I would like to know beyond uh, the internet industrialization of your work that we will do later. How do you think your PhD and your PhD work will impact your everyday life uh, as an engineer on the life of your colleagues and your company on your company? Um, <laughs> um, right. um, I think Sorry if I'm twisting again, mm -hmm. uh, but I think that the main thing is industrialization mm -hmm. because, uh, well, I, I'm not in the research uh, uh, sector of the company, in the, in the production uh, mm -hmm. sector, so people are more concerned about uh, uh, efficient production than uh, scientific development. Mm -hmm. um, so um, I'm really happy to be able to um, uh, further develop uh, this work and make it make it an uh, industrial product. Um, um, this is something I could never have uh, done uh, without doing this PhD. There was no chance I could uh, even try. Um, so this uh, is definitely uh, something the PhD allowed. Uh, then um, um, beyond this. Um, my life is not likely to change a, a lot. Um, I think I will still go to work at the same time in the morning. So, yes. 
the Rus when you first and Christian commands. Uh, so for me, I have no question as I collaborated with that. Maybe on the implementation, I just would like to thank him for this great work. And uh, before the work of David, Mopsa was able to, to analyze programs written in different languages. And now Mopsa can analyze the program on different platforms. So I find the experience very enjoyable and fun. Thank you. And I thank you because uh, the implementation would have never succeeded without your. Uh, tedious support. Uh, uh, I, I, will, I might have given up at some point. So uh, uh, really the, the the way you supported Mopsa and, and updated it to, to fit uh, some of the needs we had uh, really made a decisive difference. Uh, so thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, it's time for the supervisor. And we can start by uh, Vincent, and uh, you can try to answer again to Jerome about the new light of the leader. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um... Yeah, thank you, David. First, uh, well, I can I can only confirm the um, the interest huh, for uh, for Airbus uh, both on, on on the portability aspect and on the the patching analysis. Uh, portability uh, first, because uh, as uh, as David said, we we have to demonstrate that we are. Uh, uh, capable to 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 transfer some code from uh, embedded computers to simulators and and guarantee some uh, representativity properties fidelity uh, so that's one aspect and on the patching is also important because uh, the life cycle of our software product is quite long uh, several years in service and uh, we have engaged in a product line strategy with Component-based development, so patching of components is is something we will look at in the in the future. Uh, so, so thank you very much, David. That's a great interest. I I I, I had a, a question on the security, but it was it was already answered because it's also an interest for us in the future. Uh, and what else? Yeah, well, uh, yeah, I'm sure the life of David will change in in the future. He will have to make. Uh, his slides in, in, in Google Slides and not in LaTeX anymore. So it, it's probably a main change. <laughs> no, but uh, thank, thank you, David. Thank you very much. OK. Thank you, Vincent. Thank you, Vincent. And uh, now it's uh, Antoine. Thank OK, you. thank you, Emmanuel. So I will not ask technical questions because one well, felt that there have been a lot of questions there for you. And also, I think I, I asked you a lot of questions during your, your PhD. <laughs> So I will stop with this. Uh, let let me just thank. Uh, first, we'd like to thank the jury for for being here, and uh, Evan. Although it's uh, early <laughs> for him, uh, he could come in video. And um, Eran also. Uh, thank you very much for reviewing this PhD and for being here. Uh, thank you very much, Vincent, also for for attending. And uh, all uh, everyone here. Um, thank you, Abdel Raouf, for being here today, but also during David's PhD uh, when you were here, and also even after you left, uh, you, you offered support for David, which is uh, uh, just very, very important. And you say that uh, no thanks to David, uh, Mopsa can analyze several platforms. Uh, this is true, but also it can analyze much larger programs, I think, than what we expected before. So yes. you did uh, scale up Mopsa. Uh, even if, uh, as yeah, past experience shows that uh, embedded programs are easier, easier relatively to scale than uh, general purpose software, but still, it's still uh, something important that not, not every tool can do. And thanks, uh, thanks to you. And uh, I would like to thank you also a lot. David for this PhD. So uh, you are not the usual uh, PhD student, of <laughs> course. You've been uh, uh, an engineer at Airbus for, uh, I said, 15 years, but maybe it's even more now. <laughs> at the end of the PhD, it's even, even more. And um, so I think we, we've known each other since a long time. <laughs> and uh, you, when you, you were 
just an engineer at the time, and we were uh, just researcher at, at ENS, and we are already very interested in this aspect of uh, formal verification, and uh, not only just to use it, but also to understand how it works, and then you to uh, to deepen your knowledge, you did uh, a master research master, and then a few years later started a, a PhD, which is something quite uh, unusual. But I'm very very happy for it. It's a uh, it's an academic thesis. The subject is uh, broad, very uh, very large, very complex, and uh, you you had to uh, as for every academic subject, I think you you had to. Uh, to define more precisely what you wanted to do, what you could do during the, the time, uh, even leave some very important, interesting part, uh, such as security, because it's uh, just another PhD. <laughs> it could be another PhD. You already had, had a, lot, a lot to do. So this is really interesting. But at the same time, you could apply directly what you did to uh, Airbus code, which is something, uh, uh, it's very difficult to manage to have both. And uh, in your unique situation, you, you really use this opportunity to do it, which I am very happy. So uh, it's, I think it's a very interesting way to do a PhD with with a company. Uh, sometimes uh, academic people uh, accuse companies just to do PhD for tax purposes, but this is really not the case. Yeah, it's really, there is a real scientific value, to my opinion, uh, in, uh, in what you do. Uh, maybe just uh, a, a little question. Uh, maybe not, not fine. what it will change in your future, but maybe already what uh, uh, what was your your reception when you you produce the result of your PhD to your colleague at Airbus? You already did some some result, and you already uh, did did some report uh, internally. Uh, what was your response to this? Uh, well, uh, for most colleagues, it was extremely positive. Um, uh, first, I, I have had support uh, from the simulation guys and then also the development team to provide the code, the right versions, and so forth. And they had um, they actually had an interest in this problem because, um, uh, well, they had this objective to to be portable and. Uh, uh, this objective I had had for many years now, and it's very hard uh, to meet these objectives using current techniques. So we have had uh, uh, several issues uh, to deal with. And um, so I had support to do that. And when we, we had results, we did have some results, we, we were really thanked. Uh, uh, the, uh, the simulation team, they, uh, they when they said, yes, we integrated and there was zero Indian portability issue that for for the first integration of this type of application, this is not common actually. Uh, so they, they had the scheduled time for dealing with that, and they time was saved. So they, they were very happy. So uh, I had strong support from these uh, technical guys. Uh, I had strong support from the experts in the in the department to um, to justify and to explain that we should industrialize that and. We presented these results to um, to different uh, subsets of Airbus people uh, designing flyby wire control systems or uh, some other avionic systems or people in charge of the digitalizations approach uh, across the whole company and and uh, we had strong support to say yes uh, uh, we should uh, you should industrialize that and we might help you finance it if you need uh, so uh, this uh, we, we had a Great feedback, actually, really from, from most colleagues, and that was uh, very encouraging. Okay, thank you very much. So I'm just thanking you and also the support at Airbus on the Vincent for yes. this. Uh, yes, uh, this, this thesis would uh, certainly not have uh, occurred, and, and obviously not in these conditions without the, the support of Vincent uh, uh, as the head of department. He, he really, really uh, allowed that. And uh, that was uh, really great. And I also thank you, Antoine, for this uh, great topic, uh, because uh, um, we're not sure what topic uh, would be best uh, for industrial applications, for instance. And, and this topic turns out to have low-hanging fruit, which you said from the beginning. And, uh, 
and this made it possible to to have industrial results and that's uh, we did not uh, well not we we're far from sure that we, that this would happen and we're really happy to be able to have that really happy thank you thank you uh, so the last one um um, I uh, really appreciate uh, your work, uh, your talk, and your document, uh, your mixed uh, theoretical uh, static analysis and uh, real world uh, in, in a real world from uh, a unique software. And uh, it, it's not, so, it's not so, so, so easy, and uh, it's, a, it's a good compromise uh, between the theoretical part and uh, more experimental part. And uh, for that, I have few questions <laughs> so, about uh, your benchmark, uh, benchmarks from uh, Airbus. Mm -hmm. If I remember well, it's uh, slide 55. You don't describe a lot about uh, this big, uh, yeah. this big core. <laughs> and, uh, oh, but maybe, maybe uh, they arrive from a KCG or another code generator, I don't know. But uh, <laughs> I'm more impressed by the uh, one million line of code than the uh, one hundred, <laughs> like that. Uh, so, <laughs> so can you uh, return more describe uh, yes. uh, the properties of the software? Okay, so um, this module S here, it's actually S for scale. Um, so it's uh, scale generated code. Um, uh, it is rather simple with respect if you compare it with uh, fly by wire control systems. It is more uh, uh, cockpit avionics, uh, more warning systems. Uh, so, uh, what, what it does is um, uh, floating point computation and Boolean computation. Uh, floating point computation and Boolean computation. Okay. And to be true, most of the floating point computation could be integer computation. So, it, it, it's fairly simple. Um, uh, and it's um, it is not a very amb ambitious example for our Indian portability analysis because um, this is scale generated code that relies on a set of basic operators which are designed to be portable, at least Indian portable. So it's rather clean code. It's it's not so low level code. Uh, um, so uh, um, th th there was little risk that we that, that we have a lot of precision issues on, the, on this code and. Uh, it was actually the case that the analysis was uh, it was not hard to have the analysis successful in this code. The other one here is another pair of leaves, <laughs> as the French say. Um, so this is a, a module that does acquisitions and emissions of inputs and outputs, and um, it does it in a very low level style. Uh, so it's also auto generated code, but not at all from scale style stuff. Uh, it's uh, you have a um, let's say some sort of Excel sheet that describes the avionics networks with the uh, different systems that uh, interact by sending each other data, and we are here working with a system that concentrates data from many many aircraft systems. Um, uh, for instance, to just detect failures from other systems, and so it has a lot of inputs. Uh, it has several. Uh, thousands of input variables uh, uh, and uh, a few thousand of output variables, I guess. I'm not sure. Uh, and um, and this uh, code does a lot of mem copies, uh, a lot of uh, it has union types, uh, a lot of uh, pointer casts. Uh, 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 it um, uh, it does um, also uh, byte, use uh, bitwise arithmetic for byte swaps. Uh, well, the clean ones are used with bitwise arithmetics, and you have the other ones. And uh, it has uh, ports for inputs and outputs. And sometimes it reuses data that was sent uh, that was sent previously to resend it. Sometimes by patching it, so it handles data, uh, some of the data in host byte order, and some data in network byte order. Uh, and uh, this can be the source of portability errors. Uh, it um, also detects some issues related to inputs, such as floating point inputs. Uh, for instance, it, uh, it looks at the structure of floating point number uh, to de determine whether it's a NAN or an infinity, because this is bad. And uh, it may do it using uh, very low level code, and in some cases might be non-portable. So 
might be changed uh, using bitwise arithmetics, for instance, to make it more portable, at least Indian portable. Um, uh, and uh, what else? Um, so yes, these two programs here, they're re reactive software, which is typical of embedded systems. So it has, a, they have a big infinite loop. Uh, and the, the rest of the code inside these big infinite loops do have loops, but it, they are uh, not so big loops. And they, well, these ones here can be completely unrolled. Uh, uh, yeah, most of these ones as well. Yeah, so uh, you have a big loop around and uh, uh, inner loops are can nearly, yeah, can be unrolled more or less. Uh, so uh, there's a lot of, comp of computation, but not many. There, there are no local unbounded loops, but there should not be local unbounded loops. Only the outer loop is unbounded. Mm -hmm. uh, is this something um, you said before? There are, there are no uh, complex uh, conditions in this code. Uh, but if I remember well, in the Agilent software, you have uh, a lot of uh, a lot of things about uh, simplified condition or simplified uh, decision. Uh, you know, for uh, uh, structural coverage or things like that. And yes. uh, I don't remember MCDC or that's right, anything like that. And uh, so is that is that so basic? Is that so well? So simple. So uh, yes. Uh, well, how, how can you manage? Yes. So okay, um, uh, the, the test criteria you mentioned, uh, MCDC, uh, or uh, indeed, uh, which are avionics certification objectives or co coverage of uh, uh, verification by test uh, by by unit test. Uh, they indeed uh, are required when you do unit testing uh, of uh, C functions that have uh, complex conditions with many Boolean uh, conditions and um, yeah. But um, the, uh, the operators that are used uh, uh, in these two modules, they, uh, they rarely have the case. Uh, I would say that sometimes, uh, uh, first of all, we hardly do any, well, we do not, don't do much more MCDC any longer in this kind of code because we, we do use unit proofs. Mm -hmm. So most of the code, most of the uh, uh, unitary functions uh, here, most of them are verified by unit proofs uh, rather than testing, most of them, not all, but most. Um, and then when it's unit test, you know, some developers, they the inline conditions uh, to ensure that uh, in the condition, the condition is simple. simple. So uh, the, the, the thing is, uh, these MCDC criteria are not semantic. They're really syntactic. So if you do the testing before the if or the while, well, you don't have the MCDC uh, any longer. So everyone is happy. So it's a way to have cheap uh, MCDC. Okay, it's yeah. a good point. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, that happens. Um... Okay. For the patches, um, did you compare your work uh, with uh, other systems, other format systems that can guarantee you, that can give some guarantees about patches? I, I remember, um, for example, Co Coxinet, oh. where you have a um, uh, patches language um, to, to produce, to interpret patches, mainly for the functions, or you can add and uh, suppress. Uh, uh, parameters and something like that, and by construction, you can, you are, you are, limited, you are li limited, but you can have some guarantees about the, the patch and the propagation of the patch on the, on the, on the program. Uh, so can you compare your work with this kind of uh, approach? Uh, well, my, my understanding of Coxinelle is that it, uh, it allows to specify patches that you do uh, repeatedly uh, uh, in a large subset of the, of the code. And Linux developers use that when, for instance, uh, uh, a primitive changes, uh, the number of arguments or name of arguments or the types change. So when you must repeatedly do the same thing, they, they write coccinal patches and they patch the code. But uh, my understanding is that it's mostly syntactic. Yeah. So we, we should verify afterwards that, um, that this 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 worked well also semantically mm -hmm. and it would have been extremely interesting indeed uh, to work with the Foxin help team to to try and generate patches and verify uh, whether our patch would uh, efficiently be able to to verify that 
the way they synthesize the patches uh, allows for proof. It was actually part of the agenda at some point, but we, we did not do it. So we, we did not work on this uh, topic, though it is indeed of interest. Yeah, it could be yeah. interesting to... Yes, it would be interesting to develop that later. Okay, so the last one. And, uh, have you any advices uh, for, uh, for using MOPSA for the next PhD student or the team of the MOPSA team? Or is it easy uh, to use it? Is it easy to extend it? Uh, it is extremely use easy to use if you have Abdel Raoul to help. <laughs> uh, otherwise, uh, yes. Uh, it requires work, but uh, it gets more and more, uh, yes, more and more feasible to uh, to really benefit from the modularity. Uh, um, the first versions were tough, uh, and I was happy uh, not to have to deal with the very first versions. But now, uh, uh, well, the the interfaces are quite modular. There is a documentation that's. So really nice uh, examples. Uh, um, uh, it is getting more and more uh, feasible to to do things with Mopsa, and uh, I hope this will continue because uh, we understand this. So uh, we we have interest in helping uh, uh, this architecture continue to be uh, very usable. Thank you. Um, is there another question from the jury? Or, or is there a question uh, from the PhD? And doctor, not the PhD. No. So uh, this is kind of a difference. And thank you to the jury to go to deliberate in another room. So, yes, so we have another room to deliberate. We'll uh, exit this Zoom and go to another Zoom that I stand to the to. Zoom. Uh, so, Evan and Eran. Uh, yeah, see you there. there. We have three minutes because we have to change physically rooms and also set up the new Zoom. So okay. We'll okay. Save a few minutes. You're so, so, David, uh, your Zoom is in the yes, uh, uh, Ah, for the decision, you can. Wait for the book. Oh, it's a very nice question. 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 Let's keep it. Let's keep it live. <laughs>
Alors, euh, s'il y a encore du monde en ligne sur YouTube, euh, on laisse tourner la présentation euh, pendant que le jury délibère. Et, euh, et ben on se retrouve à la délibération du jury. Voilà. Euh, vous aurez le droit de voir le fond de la salle. Parce que sinon, tu A tout à l'heure. Ils sont restés, ils sont trois. Non, un peu plus. Merci aux courageux qui sont restés. Alors, on devrait être payé en, en boisson. Je ne sais pas quelle heure il est. Ah, ben c'est parfait. Il ne devrait pas parler. Et tu les as, ils t'ont contacté Non. Ah, ben, ils sont en train de m'appeler. Allô Ah, ben c'est super, vous appelez parfaitement au moment où je viens de délimiter mon téléphone. Euh, ouais, parfait. Euh, euh, ben, si vous voulez, je, je viens vous voir euh, euh, ben, devant l'entrée. Le, ouais. Ils sont devant la fac. Ouais. Tu, tu, tu veux y aller J'y vais, j'y vais. J'ai un groupe de tes enfants. Merci. Ouais. Quel timing j'ai craint qu'ils appellent au mauvais moment. C'est parfait. Euh, bon. bon. Alors, la première question, je suis parti complètement dans les. Non. Je suis parti complètement dans les. Comment on appelle ça dans Les bords de scène, là. Il y en a compté. C'était juste là. Mais après, c'est mieux. On les accueille.
Enfin, si, si tu veux bien, si tu veux bien donner, <rire> sinon c'est juste. On se rend le voir quand même. C'est pas grave. Hein. On peut laisser. Il y a un 
So you have studied in Italy of second interpretation uh, with the uh, Italian team of Roberto Francesco. Lorenzo is I'm sorry, but uh, you always mix up names, uh, uh, especially in the Japanese most people they have to be working in a place that they have to be able to go to or not just go for the office and get no, I'm sorry, it's um, thinking of the game has a I guess. <laughs> so yes, uh, Uh, 
Hi Evan. Hello. I think the committee is supposed to come back down and we'll have sound. <laughs> Hi Evan. Hello. Hello. How are you? Uh, yeah, I think the yeah, committee is supposed, the committee to, come is supposed to come back down. Okay. Oh, thank you now. I don't want to prematurely say anything. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, I think I'm going to get a little bit of 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 a little bit of
Alors du coup, euh, ça se branche comment cette affaire Can you hear us? Yeah. Yes. Est-ce que tu veux, tu veux projeter aussi sur la vidéo? Ah, là, là. Tu dépasses juste la fenêtre et puis tu mets en. Tu ah oui, oui. Après, qu'est-ce qu'il y a pour les attentes qui sont là? Pour l'instant, il y a. Que Iran. Iran. Et, et, et Iran, pas Iran. Et il y a la chouette, non Oui, la chouette. La chouette est là Ok. Et Vincent, il n'y a pas de connexion. Mais il ne voulait pas se reconnecter. Si, si, on peut attendre. On peut attendre peut-être une ou deux minutes, le temps qu'il essaie de se reconnecter. De se reconnecter. Ah. On est un peu lent, mais ça ne sent pas un technique. Vincent dit de ne pas forcément dans la tente parce qu'il va rester dans 10 minutes, mais là il ne peut pas. D'accord, bon, mais par contre, il va faire des questions non plus pour les collègues, c'est vrai. On va le démarrer quand même. Bon, euh, David, on va, le jury a délibéré, euh, a discuté euh, avec tous les moyens modernes de, de communication. Et voici, euh, et voici son, son avis sur le travail. Donc, David Almas a présenté son travail sur l'analyse statique de portabilité de programmes par interprétation abstraite. Il a donné un excellent aperçu des principaux résultats avec un bon équilibre entre les aspects théoriques et leurs utilisations, en particulier dans un contexte industriel réel. On ne suit personne. Le travail fondamental par lui-même impacte déjà le domaine de recherche et ouvre des perspectives fort prometteuses. Euh, le jury a beaucoup apprécié la clarté de la présentation et la qualité des exemples qui expliquent simplement des notions complexes. Le guillemet sur le simplement. Là, pas évident. Il a donné un aperçu global de ses contributions publiées dans les conférences internationales et en a sélectionné un ensemble cohérent et significatif qu'il a présenté avec un bon niveau de détail. Le jury salue la verticalité du travail effectué. La thèse commence par une question industrielle actuelle, débouche sur les travaux théoriques de formalisation sémantique et aboutissent à l'implantation d'outils qui résolvent la question initiale tout en la généralisant. Le jury a également apprécié l'important effort d'implantation réalisé par David Delmas qui lui a permis d'appliquer ses méthodes sur du code industriel à large échelle. Edelmas a répondu avec aisance et précision à la grande variété des questions du jury, 
alors de la formalisation de la sémantique à la correction et l'utilisation industrielle, montrant sa maîtrise des différents domaines abordés, tant sur les aspects théoriques que sur la finesse de son implémentation. Les résultats de cette thèse ouvrent des perspectives à la fois d'utilisation industrielle à court terme, mais aussi de recherche sur des aspects plus fondamentaux. Pour toutes ces raisons, le jury décerne à David Delmas le titre de docteur en informatique de l'université Sorbonne Université. Bravo. Merci beaucoup. Je remercie beaucoup le jury pour euh, des très intéressantes questions et des retours euh, utiles, euh, notamment les, les rapports des rapporteurs euh, qui étaient vraiment très, très intéressants. Uh, yeah. And I do thank the reporters for their great reports, uh, as well as the jury. Uh, uh, they were really nice feedbacks and uh, I'll uh, try to uh, take them into account in the final versions of the manuscript. Uh, and thank you very, very much also for the very interesting questions. Um, thank you. Félicitations. Merci beaucoup. Bon, mais je... Congratulations, David. Thank you, uh, Ivan. Uh, so, uh, unfortunately for you, it, it is now time to uh, drink champagne, and uh, I'm afraid this does not go over Zoom <laughs> for now. We'll That's quite all right. You. That's great. Congratulations. Congratulations. Uh, you know, I'm happy that you're able to celebrate with everyone there, and I'm sorry that I cannot partake. Um, but congratulations. Thank you for the nice talk and, and, and inviting me to serve on your, um, uh, on your jury. Appreciate it. Thank you, Thank you very much. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye everyone. Cheers. Okay. Uh, bon. Ouais, c'est pas mal, la vue, quand même. On va continuer le slideshow. Bon, bah écoutez,